I didn't really know much and I really thought that was gonna be it. Like I thought I was gonna make it out of this deal and it was gonna be a wrap. That didn't end up happening, surprise, surprise. I'm Alexandra Kay and I went from viral to verified. I didn't have a manager, I didn't have anybody booking me. I wasn't even really playing shows, I was just playing some local stuff. But I had the freedom to take to social media and that ended up ultimately changing my life. You guys have sold out on the In Real Life tour. I cannot believe you guys blew up this demo. You guys have streamed it two million times. I'm from a small town called Waterloo, Illinois. Life growing up was simple, but definitely didn't involve a whole lot of music. We played a lot of softball until we took scholarships and went to college, or at least they did. It was probably the toughest decision I ever had to make when I decided that I was going to not go to college on scholarship and I was going to take a year off and pursue music. And I can remember how white my mom's face turned and they told me that I needed to try to figure out how to get signed and make a living doing this within a year. Which we all know <laughs> is very difficult and I'm like 18 living in a very small town. Um, I don't have any connections to anyone. I'm just writing songs in my room. So I went out and started making connections. I was working at the Four Seasons Hotel as a hostess and I met a couple of guys who were in hip hop and offered to sing some hooks on their tracks for free. And then I kind of made my way to working with some St. Louis artists like Huey and Nelly, and within eight months of my one year, I signed my first independent deal. It was an R&B label. We just finished recording another song for my debut album. Don't wanna love you no more. Just making out some autographs for some really awesome fans. I hadn't found my sound yet. I knew I loved to sing, I knew I loved to write songs, but I hadn't figured out who I was as an artist. And I was still cultivating that. It does have a little country into it, so yeah. so I think it's cool because I think that we can, we don't, we, we don't really throw it into a category. It just kind of is what it is. The more that I was writing R&B songs and pop songs, the more I realized I didn't feel like I was being authentically myself. So I decided to leave and to trust my gut and to find my way back to country music. I did the right thing. It was tough, but I did the right thing. I started bartending, barely was able to make my rent, barely was able to put food on the table. It was wearing me down, both physically and mentally. I wanted to start sharing my voice. I started uploading cover songs on Facebook every single week from my cell phone. These were not high quality videos. I would put these weird filters on top of them and it made them look horrible. And I would sit on my parents' stairs and I just watched my following go from nothing from 6,000 followers on Facebook to, you know, 50,000 to 60 to 70,000. I felt some validation, finally, that I found my way back to where I belonged the entire time. That ended up taking me to my most viral video. I sang the song Jolene. Jolene, 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 Jolene. The Jolene story is kind of crazy how it came about. I was sitting at my house, Googling some songs, trying to figure out what I was gonna do this week. I typed in Alexandra Kay, and one of the first searches to come up was Alexandra Kay singing Jolene. And I had never sang that song before. I went to my guitar player and I said, hey, people are Googling this and they're searching for it like crazy in YouTube. Probably means we should do this song. So we did a lot of takes, but I was like, you know, I've got to get to my shift. This has got to be the last one. We did it. I was like, I remember being frustrated, thinking I didn't think it was the best I could do, right? Washed my hands to it, got in my car. I was sitting at my computer about to clock in, uploaded it from work. Didn't get off work from bartending until like, two o'clock in the morning. And it had like 900,000 views on it. And I was like, so they started freaking out, and it was, I believe, at two million views by the time I woke up, and people started to share it like crazy. By the time that I started doing press about it, which was a week after it came out, at that time it was at 15 million views, and that got into the hands of a casting director on The Voice. I got the call. They ended up pushing me right through to blind auditions, and I did not end up getting a chair to turn, and I got sent home. It was a moment that I thought everything can change if this goes the way that I need it to go, and it didn't. It was about 30 days after I got home from my audition on The Voice 
that I got a phone call from my friend Scotty. He said, I just had this executive producer of a Netflix TV show on my Uber ride. He's looking for a country singer to fill up this cast. And I just blurted your name out. He ended up being Kevin Bartell, who uh, was the executive producer of the TV show that I ended up getting cast in called West Side. West Side is a documentary about nine up and coming singer songwriters trying to make it in the music business. I ended up signing a artist deal with Warner Brother Records. I was with them for six months, I believe, before we had the conversation to part ways again. One of the hardest phone calls that I ever had to make already, like geez, was calling my dad and telling him that I lost my, my deal at Warner. And he said, you can either worry or you can work harder than you've ever worked before. And so I did. I had a right with Ryan Robinette and Tana Matz. And little did I know it would be one of the most important rights of my career. We ended up sitting there and, and, and writing the song I Kinda Don't. And Ryan says, what do you guys know about TikTok? And I was like, isn't that a kid's app? I, I was like, aren't people just dancing and jumping around? He was like, no man, like there's some people that are really getting a lot of views. Let's see what it's about. So I posted, I kind of don't. It's kind of hard to put my finger on what it was it made to make the call to call it off. I didn't even want to believe it. Next morning I woke up and it was over a million views. I was introduced to TikTok and then immediately smacked in the face with how it's affecting the music business and how it's affecting streaming all in one. I did not expect it to do well on iTunes at all. And the song was the number one song on iTunes. I was getting just comment after comment after comment like, this is real country music and I'm so glad you didn't settle and I'm so glad you didn't change. And, and the support was incredible. To think that I could have just packed it away and believed what a few people said, I would never have you know, my most successful song, which is I kind of don't, and I wouldn't have a majority of the fans that I have on TikTok. That was their first song that they've ever heard from me, and they've supported everything since. And that's what really started the whirlwind. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I need an afternoon pick-me-up. My first coffee cover is a, it's such a special video to me because that started, I mean, a tornado, like a, I call it a momentum tornado. Well, I posted this video eating avocado toast with bananas and kiwi, it looks like, and I've got a big coffee in a mason jar. And that morning, as you can see, I'm jamming. I'm like, I've got all the 90s country just turned all the way up. So then somebody comments on that video and says, what do you put in your coffee? I respond to this comment with this video. This is the first coffee video. Now boy, take me away. And got like three million views. And so I said, this might be a thing. I'm gonna do this again tomorrow morning when I'm making my copy. So I did, and then before I knew it, I mean, it was one viral video after the next, after the next, after the next, after the next. And people started calling me the coffee girl. I know she makes a mean iced coffee. She's yes, and you follow all her on TikTok. TikTok. I had done a coffee cover of Deeper Than the Holler by Randy Travis and just poured my coffee in the morning, sang the song, slid in, slid out, and I had saw that Randy had duetted it. Like he was sitting right here watching me sing his song and pour my coffee and his facial expressions were priceless. He was like, what is she pouring, is that vodka? And I just sat there like with my hand over my mouth, like this is not happening, like there's no way. So around 14 million views this video got on his page and I was getting followers like crazy and I was like, what is happening? I received a message from Randy's team inviting me to come out to his house and make some coffee with him in his kitchen. And then I got to go to the Country Music Hall of Fame with Randy. It's what you leave behind you when you go. It was an incredible day. I got to go into the middle of the rotunda with him and sing Three Wooden Crosses to him. Randy and I have developed a really good friendship and he is one of the reasons why I write and sing country music. So that was another thing, getting to thank him for everything that he's given me was one of the best days of my life. Okay, Randy, I would love to know what you think of one of my songs. Can I show you, can I show you one? Yeah. Okay, I haven't put this out yet. It's called How Do We Go? All right, here we go. I don't stop enough to take it all in 
and everything that I've been able to do, that I've been blessed to do, it's overwhelming to think about because I always thought of myself as just simple. And a lot of the times I've asked, why me? Like, why do I get to do this, you know? I was one of those artists that really thought that if I didn't get a record deal that I wasn't gonna be successful. And that's just not the day and age that we live in right now. It feels empowering to be at a place in my career, to be able to make a choice and to feel like that nobody can just pull the plug on me right now. I remember crying in my bedroom because I did not see how I was gonna get out of that town. Like, sitting in my room writing these songs, and I was like, no one's ever gonna listen to these. No one's ever gonna hear these, how? I had no idea, but I also think that that's what drove me. I failed a lot along the way, so don't get me wrong on that. I've got up, I brushed myself off, and use it as a lesson to move forward. You guys, I am going on tour with Cooper Allen and Thomas Mack this summer. As a lot of you guys know, we're all independent artists. None of us have big major budgets or managers or labels or agencies or any of that. And so many people have told us that they don't think that we're gonna be able to sell a tour out. But we sold out every single one. So you know what? We're, we're going, going back, back on tour! I'm just so blessed and grateful that God gave me the life that he did and the gifts that he did and that people wanna listen to me sharing my gift that I was given. There's nothing better than that.